Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Professor Dr. Sarfraz Hussain Sayyid, Professor of Ophthalmology, Punjab Medical College, Faisalabad Medical University, Faisalabad, Punjab, Pakistan. Today we are going to discuss the herpes zoster ophthalmicus. It is caused by varicella zoster virus which causes chicken pox at its initial infection usually at a younger age and then later on it causes shingles also called herpes zoster. They belong to the herpes virus group and are DNA viruses. After the initial attack of chickenpox, the virus travels in a retrograde manner to the dorsal root and cranial nerve sensory ganglia where it may remain dormant for decades. From there, it can reactivate to cause shingles after varicella zoster virus specific cellular immunity had faded. The mechanisms of ocular involvement are by direct viral inv invasion or by secondary inflammation or reactivation. The direct viral invasion is responsible for conjunctivitis and epithelial keratitis. The secondary inflammation which results also into occlusive vasculitis can present as epicycleritis, cycleritis, uveitis with segmental iris atrophy, optic neuritis and cranial nerve palsies. Post-herpetic neuralgia may be caused by inflammation and destruction of peripheral nerve or central ganglia or altered signal processing in the central nervous system. Cicatrizing complications may be due to the inflammation of periocular skin, lids and conjunctiva. Reactivation causes necrosis and inflammation in the affected ganglion leading to the corneal anesthesia that may result in neurotrophic keratopathy. The patients in which the ocular involvement can occur are those where there is inv involvement of the external laser nerve. This is called Hutchinson sign. A branch of nasociliary nerve supplies the tip of the nose, side and root of the nose. Usually occurs in 6th and 7th decade of age and also those patients in which there is immune deficiencies or those are immunocompromised like the patient with AIDS. The clinical features of acute systemic disease are there is prodromal phase which precedes the rash. It lasts three to five days. There is tiredness, fever, malaise and headache. In involvement of ophthalmic nerve symptoms may vary from superficial itching, tingling or burning sensation to a severe deep boring lancinating pain. Older patients with severe pain and larger area of involvement are at particular risk of post-herpetic neuralgia. The skin lesions appear in the area of one or more branches of trigeminal nerve with the sequence that there is painful erythema which later on is converted to a maculopapular rash 
with group of vesicles in 24 hours. These become confluent in two to four days and are converted to pustules which later on have the crusting and drying after two to three weeks. The pigmented scars sometimes the patient may become severely ill within one to two weeks. It is a contagious in non-immune and immunosuppressed individuals. The treatment of acute systemic disease is oral a cyclovir 800 mg five times a day for three to seven days. This reduces the severity of acute herpes zoster ophthalmicus, risk of post herpetic neuralgia and late complications. Intravenous acyclovir 5 to 10 mg per kg three times a day is only indicated for encephalitis in elderly and immunosuppressed and recurrent disease. Phoscarnet is also given in recurrent disease. Other oral antiviral agents are valicyclovir 1 gram three times a day. FAM cyclovid 750 mg once a day, Divudine 125 mg once a day. These are expensive but dose is convenient. Systemic steroids, prednisolone 40 to 60 mg daily in conjunction with the antivirals is also recommended. Symptomatic treatment of skin lesions by drying antisepsis and cold compresses. Clinical features of acute eye disease are acute epithelial keratitis. These are small fine dendritic lesions having tapered ends without terminal bulbs. These stained with fluorescein and rose bengal. The treatment of acute epithelial keratitis is with antivirals. The conjunctivitis is always associated with lid margin vesicles, which is a follicular type of conjunctivitis, episcleritis, and scleritis and sclerokeratitis may occur, which resolve with the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. The other features are numular keratitis. It develops after 10 days. It is characterized by fine granular sub-epithelial deposits surrounded by a halo of stromal haze. They respond to the topical steroids. Stromal keratitis occurs as the stromal edema and also usually it is not associated with initially with the uveitis and the keratic precipitates at the endothelial surface. When it occurs, then it becomes disciform keratitis. This disciform keratitis is usually associated with the anterior uveitis, but the anterior uveitis also occurs without a keratitis. Neurological complications are cranial nerve palsies, third, fourth, sixth, optic neuritis, Guillain Barre syndrome, contralateral hemiplegia. The features of chronic eye disease in herpes zoster 
ophthalmicus is lid scarring which can lead to the antropion ectropion trichases and dry eyes because of the problems with destruction of the secretory glands the patient can have a lipid filled granuloma of the tarsal conjunctiva and there may be scleritis which after resolving it becomes thin out and the uvea can show through the sclera the mucus plaque keratitis may also be seen in chronic eye disease and they are elevated small mucus plaques that are stained with rose bengal the treatment is topical steroids and acetyl cysteine eye drops and oral acetyl cysteine may resolve this and disperse the mucus plaques neurotrophic keratitis can occur because of the damage to the corneal sensory nerves and there may be later on lipid degeneration of the corneal opacities post herpetic neuralgia it is a pain that persists after rash has healed it develops in up to 75% of the patients over 70 years of age pain may be constant or intermittent worse at night and aggravated by minor stimuli called allodynia or touch and heat it generally improves with time sometimes causes severe depression and the patient is so much depressed that sometimes they can uh, lead to a death the treatment of post herpetic neuralgia is by cold compress topical capsaicin or local anesthetic cream like lidocaine 5% simple analgesics like paracetamol and sometimes very strong analgesics such as codeine amitriptyline carbamazepines may be required for the patients to treat neuralgia it should be noted down that relapsing eye disease can occur after many years thank you very much and have a nice day